The world-famous Bargain Barn in downtown Edgerton is a power sports paradise. Thousands and thousands of parts cover the shelves in this 300-foot-long 1870s tobacco barn. There's tanks, tires, rims, grips, coils, coil covers, headlights, handlebars, turn signals, gauges, sprockets, seats, camshafts, fenders, carburetors, radiators, pipes, pipes, and even more pipes. There are a lot of exhaust pipes here. The Bargain Barn is what people call a scratch and dent business. These types of stores buy up damaged or used parts from distributors or individuals, then resell them on the cheap, owner Ryan Sahanik says. The majority of my business is obviously the, the scratch and dent, take off, blemished items that isn't necessarily junk. There could be like a little scratch on it and you know we can sell it for under dealer cost. Like this. There's nothing wrong with this battery. You put your acid down in here, and then you put the cap over it, and then you charge it up. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this battery. The box might have gotten destroyed, so instead of throwing it away, I get it. <laughs> uh, stock air filters off of Harley Davidson. Uh, something that most people don't understand is that an air filter, a, even a stock air filter for a Harley Davidson, you're looking at $100. So when people replace their air filter with aftermarket ones, like the whole air filter assembly, I usually get them. Somehow they show up at the bargain barn and there is a brand new air filter with them. So people can save some money that way. The Bargain Barn has operated in this way for three decades. Suhanek actually used to be a customer when former owner Bill Collins ran the place. Right when I first started riding, I started shopping at the Bargain Barn, and actually the first tire I ever bought had a, na a nail in it, so I had in-store credit for a while. Funny how that works. And then uh, I'd see him time to time, and he was always a really nice guy, and I liked shopping here. Why did you? I liked it because the parts were cheaper than at a, you know, a real store. <laughs> it's hard to explain that, but. When Collins died in 2009, the bargain barn changed hands. Eventually, it ended up with a new owner, Sahanik, and a new name, the world famous bargain barn. With the bargain barn, I wanted to create a destination, not so much as a shop, because that way, people go out for a ride on a Saturday or Sunday, they're going to be like, well, let's go to the bargain barn. Not necessarily saying, hey, we're going to go shop at the bargain barn when I absolutely need parts. You know, I'd rather have them bring all their buddies at one time, check it out, and then they know what we have. A destination it is. Even if you have no interest in the parts, the atmosphere is worth the visit. Thick wood planks creak beneath your feet. The limestone foundation sits exposed in the basement, and there's at least one Guinness World Record hanging in the lobby. Sahanik earned that one by doing a 109 mile per hour motorcycle wheelie on a frozen lake. If you visit in the winter, bring your coat. The majority of the barn is unheated. But if you visit in the summer, be prepared to mingle. We can have a ride of 100 people show up, and they're all, you know, coming in and out and checking the place out which is good because then they leave and they tell their buddies and then they come and I like that. <laughs>